Welcome to Talk to Al Jazeera. I'm Andrew Simmons in the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, as this vast country prepares for the elections. I'll be speaking to Meles Zenawi, who's seeking a fourth term in office as prime minister. There are concerns about whether these elections will be free and fair. Fears also about whether there could be a repeat of the violence that marred the disputed 2005 poll, in which 200 people died. Mela Zanawi, welcome to talk to Al Jazeera. Thank you. Now, obviously, the elections are uppermost on your mind right now. But first of all, I'd like to deal with two crises affecting the region right now. And that is the Nile River disagreement and also the latest events in Somalia. Uh, firstly, Sudan and Egypt say the deal you signed on May the 14th, which could seriously affect their share of Nile water, lacks legitimacy. What do you say to that? I know that some people in Egypt have old-fashioned ideas, uh, old-fashioned ideas based on the assumption that the Nile water belongs to, them, to Egypt and that Egypt has the right to decide as to who gets what of the Nile water and that uh, the upper riparian countries are unable to use the Nile water because they will be unstable and because they will be poor. Uh, these circumstances have changed and changed forever. Uh, Ethiopia is not unstable. Ethiopia is still poor, but it is able to cough up the necessary resources to build whatever infrastructure and dams it wants on the Nile waters. Out of the countries that have signed this agreement so far, you seem to be the architect. 85% of the Nile waters come from Ethiopia. Are you prepared to negotiate further? Well, I, I would dispute uh, the characterization. You would deny that you're, you're, you're pushing it more than most? No, well, we, do, we are not pushing it more than anybody else. Uh, everybody is interested in it, uh, and, and uh, all of us are agreed that this should, uh, this should go forward. And as far as negotiating further is concerned, we see no reason why um, Egypt, uh, uh, and I think it's mainly Egypt, uh, Sudan is not uh, uh, a main problem in this regard. I see no reason why um, Egypt should not come back to the fold. But let's look at this, this issue of, of financing, you say is all Ethiopian, because the European Development Bank is involved in multi-million loans, Italy also. Um, Not on the Nile. But the, through your program of five hydroelectric dams involves funding from these countries. Not on the Nile. Yes, but that nevertheless, whether it's on the Nile or not, if Egypt lobbies hard and you get into a, uh, if this escalates, surely the, that funding could come into doubt. Egypt will not be able to stop Ethiopia from building dams on the Nile. That is history. And that is not going to be part of the solution. With respect, are you not underestimating Egypt's ability to sway international donors? No, I never underestimate that. What I am uh, suggesting that we are beyond that. That Ethiopia is able and willing to use its own resources to build dams on the Nile. That is not the way forward. The way forward is not for Egypt to try and stop the unstoppable. The way forward is to seek a win-win solution through diplomatic efforts. If, as could be the case, foreign donors do start withdrawing support for your other projects, that will obviously escalate the situation. How far will you go with this? There is nothing more we can do than what we are already doing, which is to continue to develop our resources, including the Nile water resources. We are aware of such risk, and our next five-year plan does not depend on uh, uh, money from uh, the uh, international institutions or Western donors to build dams. It is primarily dependent on our own capacity. Right, let's move on now. As we speak, Somalia's Prime Minister Omar Abdirashid Ali Shemake is refusing to resign. He says the President Sheikh Ahmed Sheikh Sharif does not have the power to force him out. Now, could this all herald the downfall of the government? Well, it's a challenge, obviously. Uh, but uh, Somalia has had its more than its fair share of challenges in the past, and uh, I'm sure uh, they will overcome this challenge too. With the situation as it is, would you not say it's the end game for the transitional government right now? I would dispute that assertion. Um, because, as you know, for example, the um, uh, Ahlul Sunnah group is now part of government and it controls a very large swath of central Somalia uh, and so the central government uh, in Somalia does control uh, a lot more than um, Villa Somalia uh, 
and I don't think this is going to be the uh, uh, the end of, 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 of uh, the transitional government. But you must observe that the situation is incredibly precarious. Around 5,000 African Union peacekeepers in the middle of it all. I mean, do they, stand, do they stand any chance without any more support? You have to look at the other side too. Uh, Al-Shabaab is in a very precarious uh, condition. Uh, there's division within the ranks of the uh, terrorists. Uh, they have been fighting each other. Um, and they have been unable to launch the so-called final offensive uh, against the transitional government in Villa Somalia. Uh, and so the circumstances are not as dire as uh, they are sometimes made to be. Ethiopia invaded Somalia in 2006. In hindsight, do you think that was a misjudgment? No. In hindsight, I think it was a perfect uh, decision. You don't think that by ousting the uh, IUC, the Islamic uh, courts, that you really made the situation worse? No, by uh, uh, forcing um, the so-called moderate uh, uh, Islamists uh, down from the Shabab horse, uh, we precipitated a crystallization of uh, political opinion in the Islamist camp. And now the moderate Islamist camp has its own identity, has its own program, which are very different from that of uh, Al-Shabaab. We broke the so-called United Front of Islamists. And your strategy in this situation now? Our strategy is to help the Somalis solve <coughs> their problem um, to, and to defend ourselves uh, from any incursions uh, from Somalia. And what about the withdrawal of your troops? That took so long. It really was stretched out much more than you ever really anticipated. That cost you dearly, didn't it? It did, um, but the African Union uh, needed the time uh, to deploy its troops, uh, to replace uh, our, uh, our troops, uh, and we felt it was uh, uh, well worth the price uh, to pay uh, to make it possible for the African Union to deploy. How many Ethiopian troops paid the ultimate price, died? What's the figure? Quite a few hundred. Do you have an exact figure? Um, I have, but uh, I'm not uh, prepared to divulge it. And you wouldn't even tell Parliament when they asked what the figure was for Ethiopian troops killed in Somalia? The families have been notified. That's the most important Why point. is that a state secret? Because the families have already been notified. It couldn't be said that you regret that whole misadventure. It's not, it was not a misadventure. It was a necessary step for self-defense. Now let's move on to the election. You've been in power for nearly 19 years, only days away from 19 years, 15 of them as Prime Minister. Now, we've heard before that you were going to retire, and in some ways it's a surprise to see you here now. When are you going to stand down? Well, um, the assuming that uh, our party uh, wins uh, uh, these elections, uh, the decision of our party is that the old generation uh, would retire over the uh, course of the next term of parliament uh, and that I would oversee uh, the uh, uh, retirement. The succession, but what about yourself? I will be uh, one of those who would retire uh, over, the, uh, over the period of uh, the next term. When? Uh, at the end of the next term. At the end of the next term? Yes. So you're going to be the last to go, are you? I will be among the last to go. So you're looking, should I say expecting, a fourth term in office. Will these elections be free, fair, and peaceful? Two things, really. First, uh, it's very clear now uh, that the people of Ethiopia across the board want these elections to be free, fair, and peaceful. And they have the means to do it. Second, the government uh, has put in place all the necessary checks, balances, and mechanisms, rules, regulations, uh, to make sure that these elections are uh, fair, free, and peaceful. Uh, and to a certain extent, part of the opposition uh, 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 is also um, uh, committed. Are you suggesting that, that the, the coalition of Medrek is not intending the elections to be peaceful? Mm, I wouldn't want to speak about um, future plans. I would want to concentrate on uh, current actions. And on the basis of current actions, this grouping has refused to sign uh, the uh, code of conduct of the parties. Uh, that code of conduct, as you might have heard, was um, uh, uh, prepared by an international organization called IDEA, and it's best practice. It's global best practice. 
they refused to accept this global best practice in terms of conduct of but, part but you didn't take on other other parts of that uh, best practice did you for instance uh, observers you're not allowing Western diplomats or indeed any diplomats from going outside Addis Ababa uh, at the moment you only have a total of something like 170 EU observers and 80 AU observers for 44,000 polling stations. We have professional observer missions, both from Africa and European countries. But they're so small to cover 44,000 polling stations? That's always the case in elections. They do not have to cover every polling station to get a feel for what is happening. Let's look at the lessons you must have learned from the disputed 2005 poll. 193 protesters died, seven policemen died in the street riots that followed. Uh, there was excessive force then. And you must regret that. You must want to apologize, surely, to the parents of those young people, those young, young people who were unarmed. Well, uh, as you said, seven policemen died. Um, and not just a, uh, a big number of uh, 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 rioters, but also policemen died, and that doesn't seem to indicate that uh, the rioters were nonviolent. Uh, the, but the point is, uh, I obviously, I obviously uh, regret the days. I regret it very, very much. Um, I do not believe there was excess use of force, but I believe our police uh, forces were very well, very ill-equipped to deal with such riots. We have learned our lessons. The opposition argues it would sweep to power if the ruling party stopped intimidating and jailing its members. What do you say to that? Well, all attempts to check as to whether these allegations of intimidation are valid or not, and there have been some investigations. All these investigations, joint investigations, have come up with the same result. Hot air, nothing more than that. But there are a lot of people, a lot of organizations, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, have observed that there has been intimidation in the past, and indeed there are allegations now that intimidation is taking place. No one, no independent observer has said, I have observed such and such acts of intimidation. No one. All of them report allegations of intimidation and by some magic wand transform these allegations into facts. And one opposition supporter beaten by government militias in front of his home and the Ethiopian authorities say he died of natural causes. I've not heard of this uh, accusation. This must be one of the last fabrications. Now we have to take a short break here. Please stay with us. We'll be back shortly. You know there are many, many observers in the West, and indeed elsewhere, who say that free speech and repression has become a feature of your administration. No. I don't, I don't accept that. And what about private newspapers? Since, since 2005, out of 19 private newspapers, 13 have been closed down. Why? By the government, by, by the authorities. Absolute falsehood. Not a single newspaper has been closed by the government. Not one. Not one. Do you know that this, this government has the power to do that through other means than a direct order? Why, why, have, why have newspapers closed down then? I don't know if they have closed down, but I would understand that 90-something uh, newspapers, uh, mostly around Addis, 90-something uh, independent newspapers might be a bit too much for the market. So you're saying Ethiopia is a place where you can say anything in a newspaper Absolutely. within reason. It doesn't really show itself when you read the newspapers, does it? Well, if by uh, saying anything means uh, uh, being um, hellishly critical of the government, then you have tons of it in Addis. And do you, I assume, you, did, you, did you dismiss the claims that, 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 that you have software that jams certain websites, that, that you have surveillance techniques, j uh, bugging going on? In a, in a much bigger way than, than most African states. Um, Do you deny that? We jam uh, propaganda uh, campaigns, hostile propaganda campaigns such as VOA. 
you, you describe the VOA's Americ service as a hostile propaganda. Hostile propaganda. Yeah. Because they report. It's a remnant of the second of of the Cold War. Um, it's a relic of the Cold War. Uh, I don't know why they uh, decided to maintain it. You can say hand on heart that you feel that these allegations, from so many quarters now, of this being a regime that is totalitarian and oppressive, you deny it point blank when the evidence seems to be there on there the streets. Is no evidence. There is no evidence whatsoever. There are allegations, but there is no evidence whatsoever. And you would let anybody investigate, would you? You would let any anybody come in to investigate independently, thoroughly, without restricting them? There are internationally accepted norms in that regard, which do not violate sovereignty uh, of nations. The United Nations has such right. Uh, on the basis of bilateral uh, understanding, uh, we uh, have offered to the United States, for example, to jointly investigate uh, cases of human rights violations that they routinely report on the basis of allegations. Uh, they seem to have uh, uh, accepted that in principle, but we have, we have yet to see it in practice. Let's move on to Eritrea. Now, if you like, the word Cold War might apply here these days. In the 21st century, is there nothing you can do in the way of concessions? The International Border Commission, the results of that you didn't accept. Why not make bigger concessions with Eritrea? But that's not the problem, you see. What is the problem then? The problem is that we uh, have some weird um, entity uh, up there in Asmara, uh, which um, uh, appears to um, um, ignore internationally accepted norms of uh, civilized conduct, left, right, and center. So let's look at the, the border dispute, the, the, the tens of thousands of lives lost over that war and still no resolution. Surely you can do something to concede on, on points there. If we had a rational interlocutor in Asmara, we would, do it, we would do it in a heartbeat. The only problem in this regard is we do not have a rational interlocutor in Asmara, and now the international community is keenly aware of this dilemma that we face. And this attack you're making on President Efewerki uh, frankly doesn't surprise me, but you say he's trying to destabilize Ethiopia, when you have 11 Eritrean opposition groups here, nine claiming they have military operations going on within Eritrea's borders. So surely this is, this is not a fair game, this, this blaming Eritrea for all of this. It's, it's an escalating situation. Um, none of these are carrying out their operations from inside Ethiopian territory. Um, whereas all the uh, destabilization activities by the regime in Asmara are being carried out, planned and executed from Eritrean territory. You have opposition, Eritrean opposition uh, members and associations here in Ethiopia. Do you deny that? No, we don't deny that. But they are not using Ethiopia as a springboard for carrying out operations in Eritrea. Now, is there any, is there any way forward here? Because this is, this is still threatening the Horn of Africa. Can you see anything in your, if you uh, succeed, as I'm sure you will, in your fourth term? Doesn't it take a different approach rather than just lambasting and propagandizing this, this Cold War game that's going on? We have always uh, declared that we would want to resolve this problem by peaceful means through negotiation. We have always declared that we are prepared to talk to the Eritrean government anytime, any place, without any preconditions. And we have always been told by the Eritrean government there are no negotiations. Um, and so until we have a rational entity up there in Asmara that is prepared to deal with uh, uh, problems in the only rational manner, in the only 21st century fashion, as you seemed to, to indicate earlier on, which is through dialogue, uh, until we have such an entity, we are, as it were, hamstrung. You are one of the world's biggest recipients of aid. That can't be in doubt. Um, 480 million US dollars from the World Bank last year, 130 of which is a loan. This is towards food security. Tell me something about the safety net program. How is that money being spent and how many people are being lifted out of poverty? The uh, safety net program uh, is designed to provide income uh, in return for uh, some community work, 
uh, to those who are not um, uh, able to feed themselves. And that program has been going on for a number of years. Uh, many of them, many of the first recipients of the safety net program have, as it were, graduated uh, from being dependent on, uh, on the safety net uh, uh, program. There are allegations that this program is being abused in some ways with the ruling party insisting on membership to take part in it. And these allegations aren't only from the opposition. And they're being investigated, I understand, by uh, foreign missions here and the World Bank. What is your view on this? Have you looked at it yourself? I've looked at it. Uh, I've, I've looked at it not only myself. I've uh, looked at what the investigations of these so-called foreign missions uh, has come out with, uh, and they have come out with a very clear statement that there is no such systematic abuse. That hasn't been that hasn't been published. It has not been published because we are nearing the elections. It is very hard, though, is it not, to to when you're speaking to. Uh, citizens of Ethiopia who feel that they may be well under pressure, that they're not going to go and say, hey, put hands up and say, yes, I was intimidated or I was forced to do this. I was told that I had to be a member of the ruling party if I was going to get a, a micro loan for fertilizer. They're hardly going to own up and, and, and go public on this, are they? Uh, but that's what the, exactly what the opposition are saying every day, day and night. All the opposition members are saying day and night that they have been intimidated, that they have been crushed, that they have been killed, that they have been murdered, and all the rest, without any fear of retribution. And what would you say to the suggestion by some that what happened to your promise of food self-sufficiency made a very long time ago for Ethiopians? And uh, over the past 18, 19 years, the population of Ethiopia has increased by rough roughly 30 million the number of hungry people in Ethiopia has not increased by 30 million. It has actually decreased from where it was 18, 19 years. So we have succeeded in feeding more than 30 million people over the past uh, uh, 18 years. And I'm sure we'll uh, be able to feed the rest of our population soon. We're getting to the end now. Um, there are those who say, your critics, you have supporters and you have critics in politics, you're bound to. But those who say that you have two faces, you have the face for Davos, of charming, uh, a progressive, and you have another face, which is totalitarian and repressive. How do you respond to that? As far as I'm concerned, what you see is what you get. No two faces, there's just one. And what are we seeing right now? You're seeing the same person. Melezanawi, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And so that's all from this edition of Talk to Al Jazeera. From me, Andrew Simmons, thank you very much for watching and all the very best.